Jonathan here with his Honda. I don't even know what this is called. It is what a is Honda this? Brio. 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 It's only for the Southeast Asian market. Okay. <laughs> so I've never seen this before. Um, we're at my buddy Adi's dealership restoration shop, and we're having like a little pre-meet for the Elite Show here in Jakarta. And uh, yeah, I don't even know what this is. So this is smaller than the Fit. Exactly, it's the Fit's younger brother. Ah, okay. <laughs> and this one is very, very extensively modified. Uh, not uh, really. I, <laughs> not really? Are you kidding me? It has a roll cage. But um, the, the motor is um, not very stock anymore. Okay. What did this come with originally? It originally comes with a 1.2 liter. They call it L12. Okay, so we did a swap to the Honda Fits engine. It's in 1.5 liters now. That is so funny to me. <laughs> that, <laughs> that is so funny to me because in the US, you know, people would swap the 1.5 liter out or take right. it out and put something else in, like right. a K series or whatever. Uh, but for you guys, for this car, the 1.5 liter is way bigger engine. Right, because right? it's exactly like uh, the B16 engine with the B20, so it's exactly the same, but di different displacement, so it won't take a lot of work to put it in, right? Got it, okay, so then uh, this one has a snail on it. This is right. turbo, it's not very stock at all. <laughs> um, so tell me a little bit about this. Yes, uh, we're running the O1 developments. Uh, it's a 54 millimeter turbo, and we have the built engine. As a Carrillo pistons, uh, Brian Crowell rods, and their valve springs, etc. Okay, and then <laughs> with all that said, uh, how much does this dyno at? Uh, on a Mustang dyno, we made around 400 wheel horsepower with VP C85, and on pump gas, it runs around 300 wheel horsepower. 400? Yeah. <laughs> wheel? Wheel. When can you floor this thing? This, yeah. you, you, you're going to have to be like going pretty fast for you right. to put, the floor, foot, put your foot to the floor. Right. I, mean, I don't even know. Uh, that is <laughs> insane. Okay, so then what about the transmission? Transmission, we're running the stock fit uh, five speed uh, with the custom LSD and adult twin plate clutch. That's and, all. And it's able to handle that power? Mm. Yes, yeah, sort of, because when you really give it the 400 wheel horsepower, we will like mash all the synchros and stuff, so we kind of kind of run it a little bit soft now with the pump gas setting. Got it. Okay. Um, and then is this original color? No. We did a paint job here by my friend Pangapul Mobil. It's a custom one of paint, but it's basically the BMW E36 Boston Green, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. Right. What else have you modified on the outside? Uh, on the outside, we made the white fenders, front, both front and rear. Oh, because, uh, so you had to make these? Yes, because we're running a wider wheel setup, uh -huh. so we need the wider fenders, front and back. What does it normally come with, like 125s or something small? Yeah, I think it's around 145, if I'm not mistaken. And then these are, what, two, 225. 225? 225. 225, 45. You need it. You need all of it. You probably yeah. need more than that. <laughs> 225. Yep. The front bumper, too, it's basically the Honda Fits GE8, or is it GE6 for you? Uh, the Jace, Jace Racing bumper. So we, need, we did a custom job to fit the car. And it's carbon. Yeah, only the grill and the lip, that's all. Okay, got it. <laughs> so then you had to cut it up to right. make it fit. Right. It's just such an interesting looking car. <laughs> I love it so much. And then uh, brakes, yeah. wheel, tire setup. Uh, for brakes, we run the spoon twin blocks, four pot. Uh, and for the wheels, we are using the NK RPF1 RS, 15 by 8. And or then there's still drums in the back. Yes. Because you can't even... <laughs> Put, we like, can actually swap it with the fit again, but I don't think, I, I think it is, this setup is enough already. Well, part of it is because it's so lightweight, huh? Yes, true, very true. What it is weighs this weigh? under a ton, specifically around 950 kilo range. Okay. So, do you take this to the track? I do occasionally. This is a serious build. Yeah. And then that's a fuel cell? Yeah, right. Uh, no, no, it's only a cover, a box. Uh, we have the search tank, the water methanol system inside. And then what kind of ECU? Are you ECU, running? we're running a fuel tank, FT550 ECU, as you can see here. 
comes with a dash. Oh. Right. That's so cool. I love this car so much. <laughs> <laughs> it's so crazy because it's still four door and the rear doors still work. Yeah, they do. <laughs> but there's nothing back here. It's nothing. just, you just did like a seat delete. Yep. The cage, all that stuff is back here. So right. did you have to custom make the cage? Uh, yes, we do. We did. <laughs> all right. Uh, 4,000 RPMs. So this does have launch control. Yes, it does. Of course it has launch yes, control. Yes, we have. So what else are you going to build? Uh, is this uh, one of your mini race cars that you've built? No, not really. It's my only one. Oh, uh, OK. Yeah. But this is, and this is not your daily driver. Uh, no, it's not. This is such a great build. So what would you build next if you could build another race car? Mm, I'm actually planning on getting an Evo if I can. But as you know, the prices here are quite crazy for those kind of cars. Right. So then, yes, exactly. Um, and then what Evo? Like an eight or a or a nine or? I actually love the sixes. Oh, the six. Right. Yeah. So then, would you keep this car still if you got an Evo six? Hopefully, I can. <laughs> I mean, you've put so much effort into this. Yes, I have. How long did it take for you to build this? Mm, on this current setup, we took around three years because we really need to R&D a lot of stuff, right? It just gets better and better. <laughs> it just it just gets better and better. Which I love the metal plates that they. Oh, it's got to be pretty hard to drive with that clutch, huh? Yes, it's yeah. very hard with this twin plate. Yeah. Well, you're doing it like a pro. <laughs> Thanks getting used to the though. This is the exact... This is exactly the car and the kind of build I came to Indonesia to feature. <laughs> exactly. You know, there's very expensive almost priceless cars here at this meet yeah. but that's not what i'm into you know I, I want to see this this is what is very very intriguing to me it's something you don't see every day there right well that and also something that's very relatable right you know this i could see if this was available in the u.s i could see um potentially similar similar builds yeah of course yeah Oh, what are you doing? Uh, I'm switching the map. You're doing the beep boop right now? Yep. Beep boop boop boop. Touch this, beep, few stuff, beep, magic beep. happens. Whoa, <laughs> 1.7 bar, I saw that. Uh, yes. Yeah. All right, so we are at the Elite Showcase venue, and it's because we shot a driving portion that night. We did the interview, but uh, unfortunately it was dark and there was a lot of traffic, so we weren't really able to get that many good driving shots. But now we're out here. That's this is more like the suburbs. Yeah, exactly. The yeah. Suburbs. So then uh, Jonathan brought out his car for us to just kind of get another look at, and we'll do a little poll. Uh, since then, a lot has happened. Uh, I did choose this car as the car of the show for me because it is the most relatable car. Was this the <laughs> cheapest car on the show floor? Uh, definitely one so. of the most. It's got to be. Yeah, it's got to be. Yeah. Uh, so this this is a ten thousand dollar MSRP. Yeah. Ten thousand. Uh, yeah, US? roughly. Yeah. yeah. So brand new in twenty fifteen, you could buy this, and there's so many of these here in Indonesia. Uh, I feel like um, it being just a Southeast Asian market vehicle, it makes sense for this to be something that uh, people modify. Do a lot of people modify this kind of car? Mm, yes, they do, but to a certain extent, right? Right, they don't go this crazy. This is probably <laughs> the craziest one. Uh, probably one of the... Right, one of the craziest ones. I actually really enjoyed seeing the... This is um, older generation, right? The newer generation. Yes. What, what year did the new generation start? The uh, new generation came around about 20... Late 2016. 2016? Yeah. I actually love the way that one looks yes. as well. And I think uh, that would be cool to see somebody really modify that. Yeah. But uh, yeah, let's go for a drive. 
Let's go. Okay. The, that fuel pump is so loud. <laughs> yes, it is. The AC works pretty good in this. Yeah, it's sort of because uh, we tucked the AC, uh, so kind of not as cool as the original one. Right, it's because it's behind the intercooler? Exactly. Got it. We tucked the AC, took, took off the ABS for a cleaner engine bay. Also, this, was the, this is the first car that featured the Turbo Smart Electronic Wastegate. I noticed, yeah, they were very excited that you were using their products. Right. Wait, this is the first car ever? In Indonesia. Oh, in Indonesia, in okay. Indonesia. In Indonesia, okay, got it. If you dig this kind of build, you can definitely go to Thailand. Because for us guys, the, this, especially this chassis, this engine, we really look up to the Thai guys. Really? Yeah, they're sort of, sort of our model. Because they have a nine second view there in the quarter mile. <laughs> Trust. Do they have a, a a lot of drag strips in Thailand? They definitely do, and their drag strips are prepped right, unlike ours here. Yeah. I think the fastest and the quickest one is the nine second one. Yeah, nine so, nine seven. What would this do on an unprepped surface? Do you think? Unprepped surface. Previously, with three hundred brake horsepower, we managed around thirteen flat. Uh, we should. Be right around 12 if the grip allows yeah because my car traps 190 kilometers in the quarter mile but only times around 13.6 with this power yeah so then again for us front wheel drive guys traction issues here because of the unprepped track yeah yeah that's the issue Transmission can handle that? Yes, because with the flat shift they cut the torque when we hit the clutch. So it's relatively safe for you. <laughs> this thing surprises me more and more the more you tell me about it. I'm so so I just <laughs> I love it. That is so crazy. that the Elite Showcase allowed me to choose from. This fits so many of my favorite categories. <laughs> really? You know, so... I think we're good to go. All right. Windows down. Windows down. Okay. Let's do a second gear pull. Second gear. Rolling, rolling anti-lag. Just the cutting? Yeah, it's, it's cut cutting. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's do another one. Let's do another one. When, when there's some room. Yeah, <laughs> you love this, huh? Yes, I do. Still give me chills every yeah. time I do that. Can you do, uh, can you do one from a standing start, do you think? Uh, I'm really reluctant to do so because it okay. will hurt the Yeah, the yeah, no worries, no worries, no worries. Okay, we'll Just do, do the rolling one again. Second door, pull, again. Rolling anti lag on. Absolutely insane. You do one pull. <laughs> oh. 
Amazing. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so good. That turbo sound. <laughs> Can we try to do one with the windows up? Sure, sure, sure. All right, so we're gonna do a poll in the Honda Brio. We got rolling anti-lag and oh. flat foot shifting. Ready? Yeah. It's not 
that's really good with the partial throttles. Got it. Yeah, for the stop and go and got it, traffic, got it. it's not that friendly. Got it. I prefer a hard pack mode. Uh, this one is a cheap alternative, considering it's got the dash already in it. Yeah. I run a Elite uh, 500. 2500 on my R32. Straight? Yep, straight. And, uh, and a 1000 on my uh, on my 240Z. Oh, okay. yeah. They're, They're good. Best. They're really nice. They're really good. It does feel like the stock is you. Everything runs very well. Yeah, right? everything it starts right away. I'm yeah, sorry. Exactly. I keep... Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to support us directly, go to LarryChenPrints.com. I print and sign every single one of these. This is the perfect gift or it's the perfect piece of art for your wall.